If a DAC has a large enough memory, does the source matter? Michael, in Stuttgart, Germany. Oh, that's <laughs> Stuttgart, Germany. I lived there for close to a year when I was in the service. I worked at a place called Robinson Barracks, and it was up on a hill. And I was a disc jockey at AFN Stuttgart, and that was a pretty wild time in my life for a number of reasons, but it was a, I lived in um, Ludwigsburg, had a little apartment in Ludwigsburg and drove into work every day, played rock and roll radio for the army in, in Stuttgart. So there's a lot of good memories there for me of Ludwigsburg and Stuttgart. Hey Paul, if a DAC has a large enough buffer, let's say several seconds of music from which it, to pull, it can pull its data, uh, w would that not mean that the front of the audio chain, CD, transport, Bluetooth, doesn't contribute to the quality of the music anymore? I if I understand this correctly, the biggest difference between good and bad digital sources lies in the quality of the clock, the jitter, etc. However, using enough techniques like error correction, etc., and given enough time, even very cheap sources should be able to deliver the correct sequence of zeros and ones. If this would all be sorted in a large enough buffer near the DAC and the DAC would pull data from there, there should be no discernible differences. Well, yeah, that's... So let me, let me explain what he's suggesting. In a digital system, if we just take a CD player, for example, a CD player spins a disc at about 600 RPM, there's a laser in there, and it pulls off the data from the disc. That data has no clock. That data is just a, a series of ones and zeros stored in the pits and lands of an optical disk, and the laser pulls it off. Then that pulled off ones and zeros digital audio data is then married to a clock, and that clock is what uh, determines how the data is spit out from the CD player, and that clock becomes a system clock for the DAC and everything that follows in the digital audio chain. So that clock and that data coming out of the CD player or, or whatever it is that's driving, uh, that, that, that's the source, is becoming the, the master clock for the D to A converter. And it becomes very important, the level of, of jitter, um, which is timing differences uh, in, in, in data, is, is very important to the way things sound. So, what, what Michael is suggesting is, okay, if you were to, essentially, well, you'd have to ignore the clock and fill up a large buffer, then play it back out of that buffer with a separate clock because uh, you, the, the, the real-time clock in a CD player, it, it, the, it is either controlling in real time the um, DAC or it's not. So if you put too big of a buffer in there, you can't buffer a clock, right? You can buffer data. But as soon as you put that data into a buffer, you're throwing the clock away. Does that make sense? So th think of the clock as the, you know, the, the, the platoon marching down uh, all in lock sync and they're starting out at the CD player and they're marching all the way through to the end of the DAC. Well, if you want that that platoon of marching in order things to go over into this holding area, right? You're, 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 the whole group of guys are going to go into this holding area and they're going to hang out for a while and get all organized and, you know, hair slicked back and <clears throat> everything just done right. And then they're going to march, continue marching. Well, that clock, that marching, the baton leader, he's got to hang out and go have a smoke somewhere, right? Because it ain't marching along. If that is that a good analogy? Well, whatever. It is what it is. So we, we can't have a real-time clock operating the system if we have a buffer. So what that means by necessity is that big buffers uh, that are anything other than just a FIFO, which is first in, first out, just a, you know, just a little bit of a delay, um, has to have an, a separate clock. And now you have a whole different scenario. So in fact, that method works very well and it is the basis of what we call the digital lens. So years ago, 
I had come up with the idea that this very same idea that Michael came up with, and I was I in Germany at the time? No, I was not. So it wasn't the German air or beer <laughs> that gave me the idea. Um, no, I was, oh gosh, I was in California at the time. And this idea had occurred to me in exactly the same as Michael. Well, if we were just to throw out the clock of the source and collect everything up after we got it off of a disk or wherever we're getting our data and put it into a big holding cell, then, and that data didn't have a clock associated with it, then there's no such thing as jitter, because jitter is the clock plus the data. And if, if I only have one, the data, then when I supply my own clock, I can have a, an excellent low jitter clock spitting it out at, at our own speed. And that became, uh, when I turned the idea over to Bob Stadther, our, our engineer, he said, yeah, I can make that work. And that's a good idea because that will eliminate jitter. It won't eliminate jitter, but it'll make jitter come down to the point of the clock that we use, this new clock. So, yep, you can do exactly what Michael said. The, the, and we do on our DAX, but we do it kind of in a different way that I'll, I'll explain later. But that's the basis of what we call the digital lens, where you take data, you put it into a very large buffer. In fact, our CD transport, the perfect wave transport, had a 30-second buffer. And it was kind of cool. We, we, just to demonstrate it, you could take a CD and then, you know, as it's playing, pull it out, eject it. And the music kept playing and it went on for, another, you know, 30 seconds and people said, oh, I get it. You're not actually reading the, the, the data off of the disk directly into the DAC. You're storing it into this big buffer and then putting it out. And that's why it sounds so good. And yes, that's exactly why it sounded so good. And that's exactly what we do today. So Michael, you get the award today for coming up with a great idea. And it's one that we've been using for years and will continue to do so. We call it the digital lens. All right. Thank you for the question, and uh, enjoy your time in Stuttgart. I certainly did mine. <laughs>